Hey everybody, this is your 7-2 Math Excel video and you're going to be using your graphing calculator on this one. It says GC. Um, the problem is a cake recipe says to bake it until the center is 180 degrees Fahrenheit then let it cool to 110 and you're given a table with your time and your temperature. Uh, part A says you're given a room temperature of 68 degrees and you want to know what the exponential model is. Before you can do your exponential regression, you have to change these temperatures. So in my case, I have 68 degrees. Yours may say 70 or something else. And what you do is you take your temperature minus the other temperature, like 180 minus 68 and that gives you 112 and you have to do that the whole way down. Um, so you could use the spreadsheet feature in your calculator to do that um, by taking this column and just saying minus 68 or you could just do it manually like type it in. Um, also um, this one's going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 68 because that's your room temperature. In other words, it's not going to drop below that temperature. So what you're going to do is do menu statistics, stat calculations, exponential regression, not power regression like we did on um, square root functions. So this one you do 4, 1a. So you do your exponential regression, then round it to three places. So um, this one, you end up with 125.653. And then your decay factor is 0.856. So um, you raise that to the x power. It is expected this number should be less than 1 because you're cooling. In other words, you're having a smaller temperature. But when you notice about this one, this is not your y-intercept. It's not the 112. It's not the 180. And so it's like something's wrong with this. So all you do is um, adjust for your 68 degrees. So you take the exact same equation and then put plus 68. Or if you have 70 degrees, you put plus 70. Um, and again, that's because we use data without 68 to do our regression. So um, I see now you can see that. It was menu statistics, stat calculations, exponential regression, 41A. Um, this number was not the same as our y-intercept. This one was under 1, which is what we expected. And in order to get your answer right, you have to put your plus this number. Um, in my case, it was 68 degrees. The next question says, um, for part B, how long does it take to cool to the desired temperature? And the desired temperature was 110 degrees in my problem. And so you'd basically graph F2 equal 110, adjust your window, and do the intersection like we did before. And in this case, I get 7 for 7 minutes. So seven minutes with 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, on the next one, it says um, use transformations of y equal 2 to the x to graph g of x equal 2 to the x plus 2. So notice the difference between these is in your exponent, it has a plus 2, which shifts it left. So if it were plus, it'd go left. If it were minus, it would go right. Now the other thing which you may not be used to is this part over here. Um, you have a pop-up box which has the vertical stretcher shrink, a horizontal stretcher shrink, a vertical shift where you could put a number, a horizontal shift where you could put a number, 
you have a checkbox for reflect the x-axis and for the y-axis and then the base so as an example on the base it'd be 2 on this one because it's 2 to the x uh, so you have lots of options here of course you don't use all of them just whatever is appropriate um, the other thing after you graph it is make sure you graph the asymptote as a dashed line so like somewhere below the box you'll be able to click um, the dashed line and you're going to need to do y equals 0 which is the x-axis then after that you have a couple more questions like on the domain it'd be negative infinity to infinity which is all reals your range which is 0 infinity because it's 0 um, well greater than 0 and it increases without bound so that's the main uh, focus of the lesson um, number seven, well, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, on problem three in your math Excel, which is 7.2.7, um, I basically just saw variations of the equation. On this one, it said three to the x and then one ninth times three to the x. And you basically do the same thing. And on number four, you have a base of four. You have four to the x, and then four to the x plus one, um, which would be a vertical shift. Um, now on number five, which is seven to 12, on mine it was the exact same numbers as six, but all you do is graph it. You don't have to do this domain range, um, other questions. Um, on number six, it's seven two thirteen. Again, you do the same thing like number six, um, where you do have to answer all your questions. Then number seven is a multiple choice graph. And so, um, just one second. Okay, so once again, a lot of these graphing questions are the same, just on number five, all you have to do is graph, but on this one, number six, um, you have to do all of your um, pop-up box as well as your domain and range question. Um, then on number seven, this one is a multiple choice graph, uh, but it has a bunch of different transformations. On mine, I had a base of five and I went left three and down one. And you just pick the, the correct graph and then the last one, extra practice A, says for the given function, identify the transformation. It's going to look multiple choice, like is it compressed a certain number, stretched, or neither? And so at least for my function, it said negative 9 times 4 to the x. So that meant in my case the parent was 4 to the x, and it's stretched by 9. The reason why it's stretched is because it's a number bigger than 1. And then based on the negative, it reflects across the x-axis. All right, so to me, that's a pretty decent overview. You do have to work through these and try it yourself. Um, it's just all about graphs for this side. Okay, hope you have a good day.